Another type of equation that we need to look at solving are rational equations. Rational equations are going to be in the form where you have um, basically a fraction equal to a fraction. Um, oftentimes you'll see in textbooks it's written as um, rational equation is equal to um, a function over another function. Um, but really it's going to be in the form um, fraction equals fraction typically. Um, when we solve those, this is when we get to cross multiply. So please be careful that just because we're doing a process that involves cross multiplying, you do not undo all the work you've done with multiplying and adding and subtracting and dividing fractions. Cross multiplying is used to solve rational equations. We can get extraneous solutions for rational equations. With rational equations, after we solve them, in order to check for extraneous solutions, we need to make sure our solution does not put a zero in the denominator because it is not okay to have a zero in the denominator. Oftentimes I do this, no zero in the denominator. Yes, it's okay to have a zero in the numerator. So for extraneous solutions for rational equations, check to see if solution puts a zero in the denominator. So I believe I have two examples here. So um, one thing to make sure of when you're solving rational equations, and I forgot to mention this up here, is that when you cross multiply, if you have a something other than a monomial, you do need to group that polynomial together. So in the first example, notice on the bottom here I have 5x plus 10. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to have to acknowledge that the 3 is going to multiply by the entire quantity of the bottom. Um, to show it's being multiplied by that whole quantity, I will put parentheses around the 5x plus 10. Same thing with the x plus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply, and I get negative 4 times x plus 2. After I cross multiply, I set those two quantities equal. So equals 3 times 5x plus 10. And again, notice that I acknowledge that 5x plus 10 was originally one grouping on the bottom and x plus 2 was originally one grouping. From here, I now have an equation to solve, which you've looked at before. So I can distribute my minus 4. I can distribute my 3. It's a linear equation. I do not want a variable on both sides, so I'm going to go ahead and add a 4x to both sides so that I will only have x's on one side. And I get negative 8 equals 19x plus 30. I can subtract 30 now, getting rid of add or subtract before getting rid of multiply, divide. Um, that then gives me negative 38 equals 19x. From here to solve for x, I have one remaining step. I'll divide both sides by 19. When I do negative 38 divided by 19 gives me x equals negative 2. I have to check my solution to make sure it doesn't put my uh, 0 in my denominator. So um, I check does 5 times negative 2 plus 10 equals 0. Since it does, this will not work. It is an extraneous solution. Since that was my only solution, then my only solution was extraneous. My final answer for this example is actually no solution. Since the only solution I got puts a zero in the denominator and we cannot have zeros in the denominator. Looking at the second example, I'm going to go through the same steps. So I'll start by cross multiplying. Once again, I'm going to recognize that x minus 2 needs to be grouped together and as does x minus 4 giving me negative 2 times x minus 4 equals 2 times x minus 2. I'll distribute my minus 2 on the left and my positive 2 on the right, giving me negative 2x plus 8 equals 2x minus 4. Again, I want my variable to be on only one side, so I'm going to go ahead and add 2x to each side, giving me 8 equals 4x minus 4. I'll add 4 to both sides because again I get rid of my add or subtract before getting rid of my multiply or divide. 12 equals 4x. Dividing by 4, I get x equals 3. Again, I have to check to make sure that it does not put a 0 in the denominator. I don't care about the numerator, just the denominator. So I check, does 3 minus 2 equals 0? 3 minus 2 equals 1, so it looks good for this denominator. Checking the next one. 
does 3 minus 4 equals 0? Nope, that equals negative 1, so it also looks good for that denominator. Since it does not make my denominator 0, I have no issues with um, my solution of x equals 3. So I'm going to go ahead and circle it, and that is my solution for this problem.